This is how the world's best distance freestylers are swimming so efficiently in 2024. And I guarantee it's not what you'd expect. Let's dive in and see what nuggets you can pick up for your own swimming in today's video. You know, I've waxed lyrical over the years about what makes a truly efficient distance freestyle stroke to help swimmers and coaches like you understand how to improve. Even if some of what I've discussed goes against standard convention and the status quo. I've of course copped my fair share of flack from the naysayers, it has to be said, but in today's video featuring discussion and analysis of the top male and female distance freestylers in the world at the 2024 World Championships, we're going to see how the very best are actually swimming in 2024, why they're swimming this way, and more importantly, what you can take from this for your own swimming or those that you coach. And before you think, damn it, not another broken record from Newsome again, we've got some great reflections from whom I believe to be the world's best swimming commentator, Bobby Hurley, to help elaborate on these points in a different voice, which I know you're just going to love. Well, I don't know about you, but this week I've been glued to my couch watching as much of the 2024 World Swimming Championships as I possibly can. The pandemic obviously threw a bit of a spanner in the works with the scheduling of the major swimming events, such that in the space of 12 months, we will have had what was supposed to have been the 2021 Worlds in Fukuoka, Japan, which actually ran two years later in July 2023, the European Short Course in December 2023 in Bucharest, Romania, the 2024 Worlds currently being run in Doha, Qatar, and then of course the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, France in July this year. If that all sounds a bit intense, it's because it is. And imagine if you're one of those swimmers. I don't envy it. With this much swimming on TV, though, I'm always like a kid at Christmas, wide-eyed, excited, and prepared to be amazed at how the best athletes and their coaches rewrite how things have traditionally been done. Certainly this year, we've had some brilliant commentary too to this effect in the form of Bobby Hurley from Australia, who was the 2012 50 metre backstroke world champion and later entered professional swim coaching where he coached both Chad Laclos and Cameron Vandenberg from South Africa. Notably, Cameron Vandenberg won the 2018 Commonwealth Games 50 metre breaststroke ahead of an almost unbeatable Adam Peaty in one of the greatest upsets in men's breaststroke at that time. Clearly, Hurley knows his shizzle, and it's likely the best commentary I've ever heard at a championship swimming event. And we have some brilliant nuggets to share with you later on, so please keep watching. At the time of Petey dominating men's breaststroke, the rest of the men's field were likely looking towards Petey and his excellent coach Mel Marshall, shaking their heads thinking, how are we going to beat this guy? He had revolutionised breaststroke by swimming with a shorter, faster stroke than all his competitors with his trademark headbutt style. It might not have looked smooth and glidey, but his record of holding the top 20 all-time world best times over the 100 meter breaststroke demonstrate just how effective it was. His style was totally unlike what most kids get taught even to this day, and certainly as I recall to the amusement of the commentary team at the 2016 Rio Olympics stating, who is this British guy with his funny looking stroke? But this is often where change and progress comes from, when people dare to think or do something differently. Steve Jobs famously narrated Apple's 1997 Think Different campaign, shortly after he returned to the company that he founded. And in it, he talked about the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, and the troublemakers. Those who are not fond of the rules and those that have no respect for the status quo, as being the ones who actually make change happen. I doubt anyone featured in that particular advertisement was purposely trying to be argumentative or a rebel. They just saw things differently. In describing how he recently broke the world short course record in the men's 800 freestyle, newly crowned world long course champion in the 800 freestyle, Daniel Whiffen from Ireland, had this to say about where distance freestyle is going from a technique perspective, which is why Swim Ireland is becoming a powerhouse in world swimming. As you can see also, no six feet leg kick at all really for me, that's just the way I move and I think to be honest that's the way distance swimming's going, nobody's really kicking, trail your legs, yeah that's it. Clearly, Daniel's coaches at Loughborough University know a good thing when they see it and equally know not to necessarily intervene and change something just to make his stroke either look prettier or to fit the classic mould. And this is what truly great coaching is all about recognising that we're all individual and have individual needs to improve our technique. 
Interestingly enough, we remixed those points over one of Daniel's Instagram posts and added to the point that in order to kick like Daniel, certain aspects need to be in place to facilitate this, namely a higher stroke rate, great rhythm, and no gliding at the front of the stroke. The post has been our most successful ever with over 87,000 views, over 2,000 likes, and a huge number of shares and saves in the last 10 days since we posted it. Whilst quantifiable metrics like this can be both a brag, of course, and a burden for anyone trying to produce useful coaching content, it's clearly struck a chord with a large number of people, which is great. In that post, we also made reference to the similarity between Daniel Whiffen and Italy's Gregorio Paltrinieri's stroke rate and kicking style. They both went head to head on Valentine's Day 2024 at the World Championships in Doha, Qatar in the men's 800 freestyle, which made for scintillating viewing if you're a swim nerd like me. We will look at that more closely in a moment with a full analysis of the race and also of female 1500 freestyle world champion Simona Quadrarella from Italy. But interestingly, also in the men's 800 freestyle final was the Ukrainian Mikhailo Romanchuk who finished in eighth position, some 14 seconds back from Whiffen, possibly not firing all cylinders like he usually does. Fitness, tapering, and the looming Paris Olympic Games aside, though, you've only got to go back to the 2017 World Championships in Budapest over the 1500 freestyle and listen to British swimming icon and TV presenter Mark Foster talking about the visual perception that Romanchuk looked like he was swimming much easier and more efficiently than Paltrinieri, despite Paltrinieri walking away with the gold. It's a huge difference in technique though, isn't that? Romanchuk was taking 13 strokes less than uh, Paltrinieri, which over 1,500 metres is 390 strokes. And obviously Romanchuk's a lot more efficient, but then it takes more energy to be that more, more efficient if you like. I've said it before and I'll say it again, minimising stroke counts and gliding more within your distance freestyle stroke is a zero sum game. The science and physics just don't back up this age-old worldview, and it's great that the world's best in Daniel Whiffen and Simona Quadrella are not afraid to both walk the walk, but Daniel's also talking the talk too. Clearly, in the seven years since the 2017 championships, expert opinion has changed significantly. Again, this is great for the sport, and it's hopefully filtering down to the rest of us via the commentary on the telly. I am thrilled with how these tides are finally turning for the benefit of everyone's understanding. If I could help you all swim better, easier and more effortlessly, trust me, I would. Given I can't work with you all though, the second best thing is to stand up here on my little soapbox and try to educate based on iterative and empirical experience. It has to be the greatest gift to be able to give someone in this way. Usually when any major swimming meet is televised, the following morning, I have my squad swimmers rocking up saying, did you hear what so-and-so said about so-and-so's technique? All I could think of was, Paul will be pulling out his hair listening to this. However, this year, for the first time ever, nobody's saying that anymore. They all know that I'm sat at home with a great big smile on my face, knowing that what they're hearing on the TV finally packs up what I've been telling them for so many years on the pool deck. As I've said, I've been super impressed by the Channel 9 commentary team over here in Australia for this very reason. Not because of some kind of cognitive bias, but because of the wealth of information, logic and common sense put forth by Bobby Hurley in particular. He had the following points to say about Quadrella during the women's 1500 freestyle at the 2024 championships. Let's listen to these now and see how many of these points you're either aware of or aim to do yourself. Yeah, Quadrella there, you can really see how much exhaling she's doing through her nose and mouth underwater. Really good pictures just to see how quickly she's able to uh, breathe in. Obviously, when she lifts her head to breathe and then just cycle that oxygen through and breathe out, exhale. And in these distance events, just being able to manage your oxygen intake and, and obviously continue to exhale is what keeps those lactate levels really low. So Quadrella does that. Beautifully and in and out of those turns, no underwater kicks, but she's just so efficient in and out of those walls. It just gets up into a stroke and up about her business. Yeah, normally the uh, the shorter distance swimmers, probably in that 400 meter down 
range they breathe one side they have a favorite side that they breathe to but distance swimmers especially with the amount of training the volume of training that they have to go through they do like to breathe on both sides just to even out uh, any sort of potential neck or shoulder problems from so much repetition so we see that from Quadrilla and Ghost. When it comes to the end of the race, they probably have a preferred breathing side that when they really need a sprint, that's where they're more comfortable. But there she is, doesn't go too deep, comes up into that stroke, gets a really early catch, swims with a high tempo, but doesn't so relax because she's not using those legs. So you have to have really good core strength to maintain that body position and float in that high in the water without using your kick to balance your stroke or to uh, prop you up in the water. So Quattarella swims a lot like Paltrinieri, her male Italian teammate, the great Gregorio Paltrinieri, 1,500-meter Olympic champion. We'll see him race from an outside lane in tomorrow night's 800 free final, which will be interesting to see if he could surprise again. And, of course, she's unaware of how far she actually is going. So she's not quite on her personal best pace that time, 14.40. But she will know that she's moving pretty quick and she'll want to try and get the most out of this swim. So it seems Daniel Whiffen wasn't just referring to men's distance freestyle swimming as leaning more towards a higher stroke rate and a two-beat kick, but also the women's as well, if Hurley's points are to be believed. And they should. The reality, of course, is that none of this is news to anyone truly in the know. Bud McAllister had Janet Evans swimming precisely this way in the 1980s. Here's Bud quickly on those points. Well, actually, I first saw her when I was coaching at Mission Vale. She was at the club she was at, Fullerton, and she was 10 years old, and it was a short course yards meet. And she, from an early age, was an absolutely ferocious swimmer. She attacked the race. She took 36 strokes in a 25-yard pool. Wow. So, I wow. mean, people were laughing at her. Yeah, yeah. But she was one of the best 10 and unders in Southern California, which is, is and was one of the most competitive age group programs in the world. I didn't start coaching Janet until she was um, 14 or 15 when I took the job at Fullerton at her club. So I knew what her strokes were like, and I never – gave a whole lot of thought to changing her freestyle because she'd swam that way for as long as I'd known her and it, she was having success. I never even countered her strokes really after that because I remember someone came up to me after one of her long course races. This guy had been watching her. He said, oh, she took her stroke count down from 62 to 52. And I go, I don't even count them. I get her stroke rate, how fast she's going, and I get her times. Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. I wasn't even focused on, on how many strokes she was taking. It was working. So let's now look at Whiffin's 2024 World Championships win in the 800 freestyle. I've got three areas to cover off here. His kicking style, the rhythm and rate of his stroke, and also his absolutely amazing pace awareness to come through the field and win from third position. Okay, so here we have the lineup for the final of the men's 800 freestyle at the 2024 World Championships. The three swimmers to really keep an eye on. In lane eight, Elijah Winnington from Australia. We've got Gregario Paltrinieri in lane one from Italy. And of course, Daniel Whiffin there in lane five from Ireland. So not actually the fastest seed going into the final, but the second fastest nonetheless. Let's take a little look at this. So the three things that we're gonna cover here are basically Whiffin's leg kick, his stroke rate and rhythm, and also his pace awareness. And we're actually gonna start off with the pace awareness because Elijah Winnington goes off like a bat out of hell right at the start. And that's something that we're gonna focus on right here. It's really quite obvious. So Elijah Winnington, closest to the camera here. So it's always quite interesting to look at the reaction time off the block, just down here in the bottom left. Nothing majorly surprising. Obviously the Italian here off in 0.65 of a second. Elijah Winnington just behind that at 0.67. So he's clearly got his eyes set on going out hard. So look at this. By 25 metres, already Elijah Winnington is a good body length ahead of pretty much everybody else within the field. This is him just over here. One of the things that I do really like about Elijah's stroke, actually, since we've been talking about this over the last couple of weeks here on the Swim Smooth channel, is how his hands enter into the water really quite smoothly there, look. So a nice, clean hand entry placing into the water, coming up and over, same on this right-hand side. Not too dissimilar, of course, to double Olympic gold medalist, Rebecca Atkinson. So it's the leg kick that we're going to be looking for. He described himself in that earlier video as not really having much of a leg kick, almost like he's just trailing his legs behind him. Let's see if that's actually the case. 
Yep, pretty much exactly that. Look, it's a very, very steady two beat leg kick, even on the first 50 of this 800 meters. So approaching now the end of the first 100 meters, we can see that Elijah Winnington is way ahead, way ahead, in fact, of the world record line as well. Now, of course, Daniel Whiffen set the 800 freestyle world record in the short course pool, but he doesn't own it, at least not yet, in the long course pool. So as he turns there, Winnington is nearly one and a half seconds under world record after just the first 100. So Whiffen's here playing it cool as a cucumber look in around about fourth position. Way back on Winnington still. Now let's take a proper look at this leg kick then. So what's great about this look, we can see a perfect two beat kick timing. As that right hand goes into the water, the left foot kicks down. And then as the left hand goes into the water, we'll just see the opposite happening, the right foot kicking down there. Now he does have a little bit of a splay interest enough in the legs. It's clearly not slowing him down, but notice when that's happening, just like I've been talking with you about us mere mortals and how we tend to make issues with the stroke when we go to take a breath. Whiffin's breathing away from the camera at that point in time, but breathing to the right. It's just got a little bit of a splay there with the leg kick, bending from the knee. A beautiful catch there. Look how quickly he gets into this here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Now this video footage is not super high resolution, but we can still see this position here, look, where he's pressing that water quite clearly back behind him, driving him forwards. Looks really, really good. But if we just take a little zoom out, here we have Gregario Paltrinieri. Now Paltrinieri also swims with that similar leg kick. So let's just zoom in and have a quick look at him. So same sort of thing, look, left foot is down as the right hand goes in, right foot is down as the left hand goes in. So again, the same two beat kicking style. Some people actually describe Palcineri as almost having like a one beat kick because it really does look like he's trailing his legs. His stroke rate is actually about 10 or 12 strokes per minute quicker than even Daniel Whiffen's. Daniel Whiffen's sit around about 72 to 75 strokes per minute. Palcineri can be up as high as around about 90. I've even seen him in some events at around about 95, 96 strokes per minute. Truly incredible. Okay, so going into the final 100 meters here, We've got Elijah Winnington here now clearly in third place. Watch out for that because he does make a bit of a comeback. We've got Daniel Whiffen here just about taking over Gregario Palcinieri. But watch the alignment here. Watch how straight and streamlined Whiffen is straight down this black line. Palcinieri only bruised to his right. Watch how he literally ends up on the ropes here on the right hand side. So look at this. Palcinieri is literally up on those ropes. It actually looks like he clashes with it just ever so slightly. Whiffen dead straight down that black line. Amazing stuff. Okay, so coming into the final 50 meters, let's take a little look now at Whiffen's leg kick. And what does he do? Is he bringing a big six beat leg kick? He told you in that video earlier on that he doesn't really kick at all. Now that's not entirely true. On this last 50 meters, it does bring in a six beat kick for a little bit, but then believe it or not, it actually resorts back to the two beat kick. So watch this here. So here he is, look, really powering now with the legs. And then all of a sudden, he just lets them float again. Now, unfortunately, we just lose the camera right at that very point. But just right here, at this point here, he just slips back into that two-beat kicking rhythm. It's also a little bit of a crossover leg kick there as well, two-beat crossover leg kick. Now, it's totally a recognized way of kicking, so there's nothing wrong with that, but just an interesting insight there into how this great champion is, is powering his way down this final lap. So depending on when you're watching this, you might like to geek out like me over the weekend for the heats of the men's 1500 freestyle tomorrow, Saturday, the 16th of February, and the finals the following day. And if the race is already over, check those results and then check back here and let us know in the comments below whether all that has been discussed rang a chord and was helpful for you or not. One thing's for sure, public perception of what makes an efficient freestyle stroke is definitely changing for the better. And if you've liked this video, please do the usual stuff, you know, like give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all of that. But more importantly, check out this video where we delve a little deeper into the science of why you should toss aside the notion of counting your strokes, at least with the view that the lower is always the better. As this is not truly the case as demonstrated here by the world's best in 2024. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.